All right, so what do we know about personality disorders? Those of you who have worked in the field for a little while, um, done some assessments, those types of things. What are some of the things that you hear um, when we start talking about personality disorders? Difficult. Interesting. Interesting. The hair on the back of your neck goes on. Okay, the hair on the back of your neck goes on. Okay, what else? They don't respond well to medication. Okay, so when we think about personality disorders, um, these tend to be the most difficult um, set of disorders to work with. Um, the research tells us that they um, are the biggest uh, users of mental health services. And um, with the DSM-5, um, they are now, uh, you're able to look at a, um, a personality disorder and it have the same weight as one of our organic disorders. Okay, so um, previously, um, and you may still hear some older clinicians talk about people who are access to. Okay, so when we were doing the multi-axial system, that's where personality disorders were found. But in the, um, in the creation of DSM-5, what we what we figured out is that oftentimes that what is really the stronger issue uh, is the personality disorder and that the co-occurring mental health organic disorder comes second. And so what we want to look at is what constitutes a personality disorder and how do we, how do we work with folks who um, are really struggling um, interpersonally and how that impacts their ability to work, that impacts their ability to stay out of jail in some of our uh, disorders, um, and to have meaningful relationships in their lives. So the kind of primary criteria for personality disorders is an inner experience and distorted perceptions and behaviors that deviate markedly from the expectations of the individual's culture. What does that mean? Context of where they are, or do they, how well do they fit? You know, it's kind of like the like daily living things, are they able to, to actually get through the, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of measure? Mm -hmm. Good. So, what, are they, what does it mean by the inner experience? What does that mean? It's not external, like, or is it something inside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it something internally? is causing um, the behaviors, okay? So a lot of this is about understanding of self, okay? And how these are developed um, and how are these are created um, have much more to do with um, adapting to life than when we had talked about more of our organic chemical imbalance disorders, okay? So when we talk nature versus nurture, okay, this is, this is a lot of nurture. Okay? Um, and so when we think about um, how this impacts people is that personality um, develops through adolescence. Okay? And so one of the biggest things that we have to keep in mind is that we cannot diagnose someone with a personality disorder until they are 18 years of age. Okay? So when they are adolescents, we may start to see behaviors that are characteristic of someone um, who may have a personality disorder, but we can't, it's not official until someone is 18 years old. Um, and so when we think about the serious distress or impairment, this is very much about our interpersonal relationships, okay? So when you think about personality, what do you think about? Not just disordered personality, but personalities. What do you think about? How you interact with the world and other people. Right. How do you interact with the world and other people? So you can have different personalities based on the communities that you're in. Okay. That it can change, it can shift. Mm -hmm. You always think about outgoing or introvert, extrovert kind of thing. I mean, it's both are all in the context, but it's just kind of who that person is. Right. So it's really about how do I move through the world? Okay. How do I... Um, understand relationships, how do I understand the people around me, how do I make sense of what's happening, okay? And um, thinking about those characteristics is that I think we all can change certain behaviors or we can change certain things about parts of our, our personality, but for pretty much, it's pretty much who we are, right? Would you say you have a good personality? 
We'd like to think so, right? <laughs> Everybody would like to say, yes, I have a great personality, okay? So when we say that someone has a personality disorder, what does that mean? They don't have a <laughs> <laughs> You don't have a good personality. Your personality sucks. Right. Okay. So when we think about the diagnosis and kind of the ethical dilemma that sometimes we face when giving someone a personality disorder is basically we're saying your personality sucks. Okay. And because of who you are, that's why you're having all of these problems. Okay. So when we think about how we do this in an ethical way, you know, I, I've told you uh, before that you know transparency is incredibly important to me, and so I am always willing to uh, talk about personality disorders when I am uh, diagnosing someone with that. One of the things that I do in, in my clinical practice is I don't believe that I can know somebody's personality very well in the first time that I meet them. Okay. And so I may have inklings of things that are going on based on things that they've said or kind of the way that I feel about them. Um, but until I have a good connection and have had a number of sessions, I'm, I'm not going to give somebody a personality disorder, disorder because of the stigma that is attached. Okay. And so when we think about, especially when we start talking about the cluster B personality disorders, that that changes the way that sometimes mental health professionals um, interact with clients and so when I think about some of our clients and if they're going to the hospital or they're um, you know seeking therapy and the person get you know the the intake person gets their all of their data and says oh this person has a borderline personality disorder okay that immediately most clinicians go oh really okay because it's a difficult personality to work with um, and so when we know that, we have to be very careful because we don't want clients to not get good care because of what someone else has said about them. Okay? And what the research shows us is that that is true, is that when people um, see someone who has that diagnosis, is that oftentimes the way that they are treated is very different. And so if we're you know, really thinking about um, being ethical and um, uh, positive clinicians is that we have to recognize that, that those diagnoses hold a lot of weight, okay? And they can change the way that care is provided. And so it's very important that we are very clear um, when we are giving that diagnosis and that we're really pretty sure about it, okay? Does that make sense? Okay.